Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. We're going to today look into section 18.4, amphoterism and polyprotic acids. Now we're going to look at defining and looking at identifying examples of amphoterism, and then we're also going to look at identifying and describing dissociation of what we're going to call polyprotic acids. So amphoteric, if you're an amphibian, you know, you're in land and water, if you're ambidextrous, you can use your both right and left hand equally. For amphoteric, we're going to look at substances that can be acids or bases, depending on the other substance. And we're going to look at examples 8A and 8B again, so just to jump back into those in your notes. Now, an example here of amphoterism is HF hydrogen fluoride plus H2O produces the H3O and HF. Now, to start out with, HF was our acid, and if we look to the other side, the only difference between those two substances is that it's gained or lost, in this case lost that hydrogen, so this is our acid. Fluoride over here can now grab that hydrogen, who would be our conjugate base. H2O in this case has, don or has gained that hydrogen ion to be our base, and on the opposite side, once it's gained that hydrogen, the reversible reaction can have it go backwards instead and becomes our conjugate acid. Continuing with our acid base, conjugate acid base pairs, ammonia NH3 plus water produces NH4 and OH. In this case, ammonia has gained a hydrogen ion. If it gains a hydrogen ion, it becomes our base becomes our conjugate acid on this side because it can donate that hydrogen back. Water then must be our acid in this problem because it is going to donate the hydrogen ion to become the hydroxide and on this side it will be the conjugate base. Now in both of these cases water is changing. In the first case water is the base in the second case the water is the acid and it depends on the other substance for which one it's going to be. So looking at this example, we're going to look at predicting our conjugate acid base, so we're going to draw our connecting lines, and then from there we're going to decide which substance is amphoteric and why. So to begin out labeling, hydrochloric acid here, H to Cl minus and H4, now hydrogen is going to be donated, since it's donated, it's going to be our acid, making NH3 accepting a hydrogen ion the base. Now the only difference between our reactant products is where that hydrogen ion is moved. Chloride can accept a hydrogen, so it's become our conjugate base. NH4 can donate a hydrogen ion to become our conjugate acid. So our conjugate acid base pairs and lines drawn out there. The second case, NH3 plus OH minus. What we're going to see is that NH3 is going to go to NH2 minus, so it's going to donate a hydrogen to get over here, whereas OH minus is going to accept a hydrogen to move over here. If our NH3 is going to donate a hydrogen as our acid, hydroxide ion is accepting hydrogen as our base. And when we get to the opposite side, NH2 minus can accept a hydrogen, conjugate base, H2O to get back to the opposite side is going to be our conjugate acid. It can donate a hydrogen ion to get back. If we were to look at charges to begin on this side, it's neutral. And on this side, negative 1 and positive 1, if you add those up, are neutral. Now on this side, on this bottom one, neutral and negative 1 give us a negative 1 charge. And on this side, negative 1 plus neutral gives us negative 1 on this side. We'll always have the same charges from beginning to end. So that's just kind of a nice little other idea. Which substance is amphoteric? In this case, NH3. Because it, in one case it's the acid, and in another case 
it's the base depending on what the other substance is. Now our other idea for this section is called um, protic. Now hydrogen ion, remember hydrogen has one proton, so it's just one proton in the nucleus, and there's one lone electron around it. So if we are to take that proton away and it just becomes the positive charge, the P positive, all hydrogen is is going to be just one proton. And so when you hear the word protic, it comes from proton. So we're going to look at three ideas. Monoprotic is going to be substances that have one H plus. An example would be HCl just has one hydrogen ion. Now we go from there, mono to polyprotic. Poly meaning many. Protons, protic meaning protons. And then acids are going to donate those protons. So diprotic means it's a substance that can donate two hydrogens. H2SO4 means it can donate two H pluses. And triprotic is going to be a substance that can donate up to three hydrogens. Now, when they do that donation, they do this in steps, one at a time. So an example, H3PO4 aqueous, so that's phosphoric acid plus water, is going to make three H2O pluses and the PO4 minus. Well, it doesn't quite do that all at once. It's going to instead do that in steps. So first off, H3O is going to be our, our H3PO4 is our acid and our base, and it's going to, through our first reaction, reversible, is going to donate one proton to the H3O positive to make H2 negative, or H2 PO4 minus one. So it's donated one, our one ion. From there, the H2PO4 can start again. H2PO4, remember, it's got a minus charge now. It's donated one of its hydrogens. With another water molecule, it can donate another hydrogen to make our H3PO positive, and now HPO minus two. And then it can go one more step, and we can take that substance, and we can donate another hydrogen to make H3O positive again, and PO4 minus three. Notice each time we lose a hydrogen, that, that negative charge increases. So it's going to take one hydrogen at a time, and each time it loses a hydrogen, H3, H2, H, it's going to gain a negative charge each time it loses that hydrogen ion.